Welcome to this workshop on AI governance in a shifting environment. And congratulations to my Digital Malaysia Center for IR for its first anniversary. Indeed, the agency has been a driver for digital transformations and energy transition. The AI for Raya Digital Literacy Program, for example, launched by the Prime Minister in January, readily comes to mind. My appreciation to Microsoft for making this program possible and for giving ISIS Malaysia the opportunity to construct this conversation around this very important topic. To reiterate the potential of AI in this gathering may perhaps be akin to preaching to the choir. Yet certain things bear stressing. First off, we are riding on the trajectory of a technological evolution, showcased by a shift from a software-centric world to one that is AI-centric. In this dynamic transformation, we bear witness to generative AI platforms, for example, becoming the new black, as it were. But unlike the ephemeral fashion brands, we are looking at a new digital infrastructure supplanting conventional software and in the process effecting a paradigm shift in digital services. Indeed, as the buzzword that goes around, quote, the technological zeitgeist of our times is one of exponential progress and our civilization thrives on technological growth it's our prerogative to strive for a better future, unquote. Specifically, AI will transform lives economically and socially. And Aristotle reminds us, man being a political animal, AI will impact our lives politically as well. It therefore behooves us to have multi-stakeholder conversations and discourses on governance across the board from the technical community, the legal fraternity, lawmakers, business, and well into the era and arena of the humanities. Effectively, what is indeed is nothing short of a whole of nation approach to ensure AI's safe deployment and adoption. The Malaysia Center for IR and Microsoft report released last year stated that generative AI has the potential to unlock USD 113.4 billion in productive capacity in the Malaysian economy alone, while the digital sector as a whole is expected to contribute 25.5% to Malaysia's GDP in 2025. However, AI has its perils. Chat GPT has hallucinated court cases, and meanwhile, autonomous car accidents have developers and lawmakers grappling with the question of responsibility in a moral and ethical context and liability in the legal sense. The challenge, therefore, is that with greater AI proliferation comes the propensity to outsource decision-making to AI. Ladies and gentlemen, when René Descartes stated, Je pense donc je suis, more popularly known in the Latin version of Cogito Ergo Sum, I think, therefore I am. He purportedly found the holy grail in the philosophical quest for the proof of man's existence. Now, from the prism of AI, the question is then posited whether it fulfills that task. Can and do machines think? And if they do, can they understand? After all, intelligence is derived from the present participle of intelligera, which is to understand, to comprehend, to know. One view is that machines can indeed think, as evidenced by the giant leaps already achieved in GAI and LLMs. The thinking faculty here is signified by the ability not just for knowledge generation, hence generative, literally, but understanding and the subjective employment of reason in order to engage in meaningful dialogue. Detractors, however, argue that this supposition of machines thinking is misconceived 
and that while they may perform the functions assigned by man to them, their existence does not fulfill the Cartesian sense of existence. The question really is, how does this line of inquiry have any relevance in today's conversation on artificial intelligence? And the answer is quite clear. For the purposes of today's discourse, the ability to define intelligence in AI has its impact, among which is on constructing governance mechanisms, which could strengthen guardrails towards an AI-empowered, yet a safe society. As observers, we may fall into the trap of anthropomorphizing technology. In looking at AI, we would ask, can AI be safe? Can AI be fair? Would AI support the Malaysian values we practice today or might the systems developed from principles outside of the country introduce their own versions of reality? While there may be some principles we regard as universal, as universal processes for the promulgation of laws suggest that there is no single set of human values. Morality and ethics can be shaped by culture, community and, of course, even religion. In the case of Malaysia, two aspects of governance take precedence. First, cognizant that AI may be trained across borders, international standards and principles will apply. And this raises the significance of international processes, building safeguards and guardrails in AI. Developers offering AI services across borders would refer to such standards for practicality and ease of business. Therefore, to project Malaysia's AI profile, Malaysia should assert presence in international platforms on AI norms. This was the conversation we were having just around during breakfast. Standards and regulations. This could allow Malaysia to shape future global governance of AI in ways that would be reflective of Malaysian values, ethics and morality. Conversely, in Malaysia, we could reflect on existing international standards and gauge how they could be adapted to Malaysia's AI ecosystem. This will work towards harmonization in standards and principles. Secondly, is the modality of governance within Malaysia. For example, the EU's AI Act categorizes AI systems based on their risk levels, prescribing stricter systems and requirements for the process of adoption, development, and procurement of certain technologies. However, there can be concerns. Curbing the adoption of technologies in critical sectors due to the fear of making errors could be tantamount to imposing shackles on productivity in these sectors. Then, there are those which are output-based, where governance can be of a lighter touch, because the role of regulation is to mitigate output harms. However, the ubiquity of AI means that impact can be far-reaching and could cover a wide range of issues, from the loss of jobs, new technology-enabled cheating in schools, to misdiagnosing patients. Nevertheless, viewing AI only from the problems it raises could tend towards a negative and rather myopic approach towards AI governance. Thirdly, the sector-specific approaches towards regulating AI could be managed through sector-specific laws and guidelines. This is governance which identifies roles and responsibility with compliance and trust as an ongoing process. Constructing malicious mechanisms to govern AI require deep conversations on malicious institution, legal mechanism, and ecosystem architecture, which is why we are here today. Ladies and gentlemen, certainly this workshop would not be the last on this topic. We need more of these conversations to deep dive into specific areas and build greater trust. With that, I wish you a very fruitful workshop and meaningful discussions. Thank you.